Hi, this is JP Morgan. Today on the Slant Lens, we're gonna photograph wild animals with our laser trigger by my ants. Wild, ferocious animals. So stick with us and see what we got. The business coaching class is starting once again. Sign up for our free call, it's March 3rd. Get on with us, spend an hour and a half where we talk about business, understand the value of it. Come and join us, sign up today. So the wild, crazy creatures we're about to photograph are hummingbirds. I've been wanting to take pictures of hummingbirds for a long time, don't judge. So I set everything up to be able to make it happen. The first thing I needed was hummingbirds. I put a hummingbird feeder just outside the window here in my kitchen. We're remodeling this kitchen so I can kind of do whatever I want in here right now. Secondly, I realized that the birds were all around this thing and not where I wanted them. I wanted them in one place. So I taped off the other two holes in the feeder so there was only one hole they would come to feed at. And that made it perfect. They were right where I wanted them so I could photograph them. Now let's take a look at our camera setup. We've got a Mark III inside the house with a 90 millimeter macro lens. It's that Tamron 2.8 macro lens. Very sharp lens, great lens. So we put that inside, lean the camera in with a tripod so it's close to the window. Now we put our laser outside on the lawn. It's about 10 feet away and it's having to go through the glass, which is not a problem. And we aim that right at the laser trigger. The first time we did it, we aimed it straight at the laser trigger and the birds are coming in underneath it. We're realizing, well, we've got to get that laser so it's going to cross the path where the birds come in to feed. So as we lowered the laser outside, that path got lower and lower into where that laser went straight through the spot where the birds were coming in to feed and then they would fire our trigger every time. So it's important to get that laser in the right place. So camera inside, laser outside, we're ready to start shooting, but in the background I got these big white blurbs in there that I didn't want. So we cut some branches off from a tree, brought them in on C-stands, kind of covered up one of the blurbs, and then we had a, a production vehicle back there. We put branches on top of that, and now we've got nice soft foliage colors all through the shot and look very pretty. So it's just a matter of dressing that frame, very easy to do. So now let's take a look at our light. Very simple lighting. We're exposing for outside, because that's my whole background, is just outside, but then the bird's very dark. So I brought a vector light inside, an LED, brought that up really close to the window, put it on the right power setting to give us a nice kind of balance on light so that it opens up the bird and makes them look nice up front. By exposing for the background and then bringing our vector light in to kind of brighten up the bird, it gives us a nice balance we're ready to shoot. But let's talk about the camera settings and that's the next thing. Camera settings, I set my ISO at 1250. I set it at 1250 because I really needed depth of field for the bird and secondly shutter speed to try to stop the bird. I first started at a 50 of the second at 7.1 because I thought, well I need a lot of depth of field for that bird, he's moving around. The problem is he's moving around so fast it was hard to get anything that was very sharp. But I did, actually the image I used with this was one of those shot at 50 of a second at 7.1. But it really worked out better when I went to 500th of a second at 4.5. Now I have not as much depth of field, but the shutter is going to stop the bird a little better. These birds are moving so fast that the shutter is not going to stop them. But a 500th of a second shutter is going to have a much better chance than a 50th of a second. So now let's look at the myops. So the one thing we do with the myops is that when the bird crossed the laser, we set the myops to take seven frames. So the bird comes in, trips the laser, and it just goes click, 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 click. It's not a motor drive, it's not on motor drive mode. It's just the camera's shooting as fast as it can. One, two, three, four. So you get the bird moving around, and they kind of stay for a minute or two as they kind of hover in there. And so they just click, 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 and they do those uh, seven different shots. So the nice thing about this setup is that I don't have to stand here all day to try to get these photographs. I'm going to go back and work at my desk and every so often I'll hear the click, click, click of the shutter going off and I know I'm getting more birds. So that's the nice thing about this setup. So we're going to let this sit today, see the shots we get. I'll check it out every so often just see what it looks like. But in the end, we'll look through those, find the best one, take that into Photoshop and do some editing. It's been a while since I've calibrated my monitor. So before I get started on these images, I'm going to calibrate my monitor with my data color Spider 5 Pro. That'll give me confidence that the color is going to be correct and the images are going to look right. All right, so I picked my favorite image in Bridge and brought it into Photoshop. So it opened up here in Camera Raw. And several things are going on here. We don't need this laser, obviously. Got to get rid of that. And it's kind of the colors a little pasty. So we're going to do a couple things to it. The first off is I'm going to start by pushing our blacks just a little bit. I'm going to bring them back to almost 20, eh, about 28. That's going to give us a nicer look there, somewhere in there. The bird feels a little has a little more presence there. It looks really nice. I'm now going to take my clarity, I'm going to kick the clarity up just a little bit. I'm going to go up about 14 or 15 is where I start out, where the feathers are going to start to feel nice, and it's going to give us a nice sense of the, uh, the bird's feathers. That clarity really does a nice job for any kind of detail like that. And our vibrance now, our background is really boring. I mean, if we kick our vibrance up, we can get us up into 34, 
you know, we now have a nice vibrant background with our bird. It looks really nice. We're losing a lot of his wings. We're going to have to do something about that. We can kick our saturation up just a little bit. Maybe to like 14, 15. No, way too much. Bring it back into about 14. I think it'll look really nice. So now we've got a nice saturated image. I'm now going to go up here and I'm going to take the, and I love doing this. I do it in a lot of my images. But I'm going to take the gradation here and I'm going to take a gradation from the top. And I'm just going to gradate that top so we get a little darker at the top and goes to a little lighter at the bottom. And so I'll play with that a little bit and just see where I like that, you know, as far as make sure we're level on the top. There we go. I mean, we can take, pull this thing way down, but it's going to get in front of our bird and start to darken his head. So I'm going to bring it back up and just let it start to darken the top. Now when I'm in this layer, I can look at that exposure and I can make that either brighter or darker, depending on what I want to do with it. So I'll find a spot where I feel like it's comfortable. It's going to, to work with what we have uh, below and not make it too, stand out too much. It's pretty bright right now, so I'm going to bring it back just a little bit here. And exposure is, comes down just a little bit. So that just gives us a little something nice on the top. So we're going to go back to our image now. And I'm feeling like we got something going there. It's not a nice gradation. There's some things I'm going to want to do. I'm going to open it in Photoshop, take care of those. Now first off in Photoshop, I'm going to definitely go here to over underneath the patch and use the patch tool. I'll just get rid of this whole mess right here with the patch tool. Circle that. Gives me an outline. As I move it over, it's going to move it over and get rid of all that stuff. I can decide what I want to have there. And deselect Command D. And it's kind of got rid of that corner. Everything's so modeled anyway that it kind of uh, just kind of blends in. It's pretty nice. I'm going to leave that one because I think I'm okay with it. Uh, it's not too bad. But now our laser thing here, I can try the patch tool on the laser. Um, it's going to do some there, but it's also going to leave a red kind of, uh, kind of glow around it if I'm not careful. Well, let's try that and just see what we get. If I go towards the wing, I'm now going to be using the wing area, and I'm going to want to line those lines up as much as I can so that it feels comfortable in there. Let's just see what that looks like. It's not terrible, but I see a little bit of that red glow around it. I'm going to want to take and just go in and play with that a little bit here. So I'll probably go up underneath the clone stamp tool and I'm just going to take and just lightly, probably about 30%. I'm going to just go in and I'm going to just, I'm just going to just give me a little bit, take some of that red out with the, that tool. There's a little bit of red in it, but there's a little bit of red in here as well. The bird has some of that in his wings. You can see it kind of going through, so that looks very nice. Okay, so the last thing I'm going to do with this image is I'm going to create a curves adjustment layer. So I'm going to come over here and create a curves adjustment. It's going to come up in my little box here. I'm going to pull this down a little bit, make it a little darker. That's nice. Uh, I'm now going to click in the curves layer. Command I will go to black. So now I'm going to start to paint black in. I'm just I'm going to take my Opacity, if it's at 100%, I would bring it down to about 60%. I don't want to use too much. And I'm just going to slowly paint in this wing. Just make it just a little bit darker. And try to do nice, smooth, go all the way out. You know, that in there. It just starts to define the wings just a little better. It looks, uh, looks a lot nicer. So there's our image of a hummingbird. Let's take a look at it full screen. So this was fabulous. I learned a couple of things. Those settings, I didn't need as much depth of field as I thought I did, but I needed a faster shutter. This kind of reminds me of a poem, and well, you'll know the artist and you'll recognize it because you've probably all heard it several times. A little birdie came tapping, tap, tap, tapping at my window seal. I coaxed him in with crumbs of bread, and then I smashed his little head. So on that note, keep those cameras rolling, keep on clicking. The Slamlands Business Coaching Class is back. People have been asking me, when are you going to do it again? Well, it's time. We're going to start March 3rd. Get on our free call. It's an hour and a half free call. We're going to teach you the daily routine for success, and then we're going to get ourselves started. We're going to grow our businesses. So it's back. The Slamlands Business Coaching Class. Sign up for the free call today. Don't forget to subscribe to The Slanted Lens. Like us on Facebook. Tell your mother about us. Tell your mother's mother about us.